This webisode is sponsored by and taped on location at Learning RX Atlanta Buckhead, located at 5252 Roswell Road, Heritage Park, Suite 100. Learning RX Atlanta Buckhead is a cognitive learning center offering one on one brain training for children and adults living with ADD, ADHD, or a variety of learning differences, or really anyone who wants to train their brain to work smarter faster with guaranteed results. Well, we talked about adults and if it's ever too late for brain training, but let's talk about the flip side and whether brain training is, you know, valuable for preschoolers or what sort of indications parents may see in their toddler that they may need, um, you know, a follow-up conversation with a pediatrician or an evaluation. So Cindy Pearson's here and you've had two children that have gone through the program here at Learning RX. Tell us about the differences that you saw in them as toddlers that were indications that maybe they did have a learning difference. Okay, I'll start with my um, oldest child, Emily. She's now 16. We really started realizing that she had issues because um, she, at the age of two, was not speaking. Um, she sort of grunted a little bit, and her sister tended to speak for her. Um, so really, she didn't start speaking until probably the age of three, and now she is not quiet, but uh, until the age of three, she um, did not speak. The other thing is we noticed that every single night at bedtime, we would sing Emily Twinkle Twinkle Little Star as her uh, nighttime song after we read stories, and um, Emily could not sing the song back to us. So we noticed that she could hum the song, she could get a few of the words, but she was not able to, to say the complete story song to us. So we started picking up on it probably about the age of three. When she entered preschool, she did fine socially. She had started talking, everything was fine socially, um, but she wasn't able to remember her address. She wasn't able to remember her phone number. She wasn't able to draw the stick figure little man correctly. So it was showing that there was, you know, some issues that we, we really needed to start realizing and working on. It was tough to real, realize all that and to see all of that um, because we did have an older child who everything came very, very easily. And so we had to sort of readjust and and educate ourselves on what we needed to do for Emily and make those different school choices and, and different choices that we had to make. And for your son Joshua? And then for our son Joshua, who was um, who is adopted and um, was adopted several years after our, biolog our biological children were older. Um, it was very obvious that uh, Joshua had issues. He was apraxic. He wasn't speaking at the age of four. He had been in an orphanage for three and a half years of his life. So it was very obvious that we were going to be dealing with a lot of issues. We really didn't know what the issues were, but we knew we were going to have to start working on it. So we immediately started speech. We immediately he came from a Spanish-speaking country, so we first had to teach him to at least understand English. But we started the speech therapies and the occupational therapies because he would fall when he walked. He couldn't walk upstairs. You know, there's a lot of things. Um, and it's just been a very slow progress, and we've had to have um, a lot of patience because uh, there were so many things that we needed to work on and figure out. Is it ADHD? Is it autism? Is it um, apraxia? Or is it... Um, you know, is he going to need assistive uh, technology to help him uh, function? You know, but fortunately, through every stage, um, we've been introduced to people or places like Learning RX who've made a huge difference in his life, and he is now a very uh, a child who's very social and communicates and is doing well in school socially and is making a tremendous amount of progress. You know, what Cindy was talking about, those indications about speech and memory, are those things that, you know, me as a mom as of a preschooler should be looking at to learn and find out if there's an indication of any sort of learning difference? Definitely. If, um, you know, if you notice that your preschooler is maybe having trouble remembering their numbers or retrieving color names or things like that, um, that may be an indication to you. Um, it's pretty common when they're in preschool to have B's and D's mixed up. That's totally normal. But um, when they're having trouble, you know, learning shapes and colors and numbers and um, most letter names, that could, that could be a pretty clear indication that you may want to, um, you know, have a screening for some type of cognitive skill.
or at least have a follow-up conversation with your yeah. pediatrician would be exactly. a good thing to have here. So thank you, Bryce, and thank you, Cindy, because I know there are a lot of parents out there, you know, like me, who have a child under the age of five, and you may be thinking, well, they're not in school yet, I'm not getting a report card, I'm not getting a progress report, so I really don't know, but what they mentioned are good indications of things that we need to look out for. Now, in terms of the one-on-one -on -one training that goes on here at Learning RX, I'm gonna give you a look at some of the actual training stations where children and adults work with trainers like Bryson one-on-one -on -one, going through different exercises and for children I know um, Cindy and I mean Beth and Susie the director showed us uh, that there's an actual reward system that children are rewarded when they do well in the program so any questions here about what Learning RX is what it does you can go to their website learningrx.com backslash Atlanta hyphen Buckhead and I'm gonna put a link here on mommytalkshow.com